bases here. Big opportunity for them to prove themselves tonight against North Carolina A&T. And North Carolina A&T, we think, we think they're going with two quarterbacks in this ball game tonight. One a redshirt freshman, one a true freshman, one from California, one from Virginia. It's Eli Brickhandler and KJ White. Eli Brickhandler is the guy with a little bit of experience. Coaches this week talked about how they wanted him to focus on decision making, taking care of the football. KJ White on the other side, really interesting talking to head coach Vincent Brown. Such a dynamic athlete. They feel like even if he doesn't end up being the guy at quarterback, he will find a way on the field one way or another. For UAB, Jermaine Brown Jr. They call him Skull because he was hard-headed as a kid. He's already one of the most accomplished players in UAB history, and now he is RB1. Almost 1,000 yards rushing last year as a backup, and especially with a new quarterback in Jacob Zeno here at UAB. Run game is going to be incredibly important, and it starts and ends with Jermaine Brown Jr. We told you new coaches on both sides for North Carolina A&T. Vincent Brown makes his head coaching debut, the 22nd head coach at North Carolina A&T, former second-round pick of the New England Patriots. And then on the other sideline, Trent Dilfer. He's gone from playing to working in television to being involved with Elite 11 to retiring to being a high school coach, and now he is a college football coach. A couple of pro bowlers that are head coaches making their debuts tonight. UAB won the toss. They will receive the opening kickoff. Cameron Shanks back to receive. Caleb Brickhouse will kick it away for North Carolina A&T. And from Protective Stadium on a Thursday night, the college football season is underway. Shanks nearing the 20-yard line, corralled and dropped just short of the 20-yard line, a 19-yard kickoff return, and the UAB offense will come onto the field for the first time tonight, and they will do so with quarterback Jacob Zeno. Redshirt junior from San Antonio, Texas, started his college career at Baylor. He was the backup here a year ago, had a couple of starts. A big game against UTSA, his second start last season. 332 yards, a couple of touchdowns. See the career numbers for Zeno. This coaching staff for UAB really pleased with the progress he made from the spring through camp to this opening game. I love that offensive coordinator Alex Mortensen told us this week he felt like the last three practices for Jacob Zeno, those were his best, getting into the best form leading right up to game time. And you touched on that UTSA game last year over 300 yards passing. They feel like, especially under this new tutelage, with Jacob Zeno and Alex Mortensen. They really have something special here at Jacob Zeno. It's game one for everybody, in, uh, including the uh, the folks that put players on the field in the same number. So we think UAB with a penalty. You had Malachi Holt Bennett and uh, Jamarcus Correction, Jones that's both declined. 13. It's first down. The penalty was declined. And so instead of re-kicking, NCAA and T is content to have UAB start inside the 20-yard line. Nate Black, our referee tonight. A couple of starts last year for Jacob Zeno. To the outside, Brown on the first carry of the season out across the 25-yard line. Eight of seven on the carry. A couple of guys on the defensive side for NC a and our impact players brought to you by Regents. Karan Prunty, four interceptions a year ago. Kansas transfer that they feel like is their best cover corner as UAB goes fast. Brown out to the 30. That'll be close to a first down. I think he got across the line. It was actually Isaiah Jacobs who popped into the game for his first carry. You saw in that opening play, UAB split out Jermaine Brown Jr. off to the side out wide on a slip screen to him, or excuse me, a shuttle pass. They're going to figure out ways to manufacture touches for him, not just your standard run game. Jacob stays in the backfield in the pistol formation behind Jacob Zito. Two plays and a first down for UAB on their opening drive of the season. Play action. Zito with time finds a receiver coming across the middle out to the 45. Gate of 16 yards on the reception for Tajon Palmer. Love the play call from Alex Mortensen. Get Jacob Zito out on the edge. Nice, simple. One, two, three progression. Works down to an over route from Tejon Palmer. Good first completion to get under Jacob Zeno's belt. Tejon Palmer, 30 catches a year ago. 
Jacobs straight ahead across midfield into Aggie territory for the first time tonight. Gain of eight on first down there for Isaiah Jacobs. Jacobs the transfer from Independence Community College in Kansas. This time play action and Zeno's going to keep it himself. He'll go across the 45 and out of bounds for another UAB first down. B.J. Turner ran him out. I love the quick decision making there. They've got T.J. Jones on the over route again. It was a little slow developing. Jacob Zeno knows, hey, I can tuck this, go pick up the first down and move the sticks. It's North Carolina A&T team. As what Dilfer was talking about their coaching staff when we visited with him yesterday, ton of respect. Ray Brown back into the game. He goes in motion. So an empty backfield as Brown is wide at the top of your screen. Quick pass near side. Strap hooks on the catch. Iverson strap hooks with his first reception of the game. And it's another positive gain on first down. 51 new players on this UAB roster. You mentioned that in the open. So a lot of new faces for Blazers fans. Pass incomplete. No flag on the play. Dangerous throw there from Jacobs. You know, that was the one thing when you watch that UTSA tape from last year. Could have had three interceptions in that first half. The decision making with the football, one of the things Alex Mortensen, offensive coordinator, talked about they had to improve. Been impressed so far, though, with the tempo from UAB. Anytime they have a chunk play, getting right on the ball, lining up, and going again. Get it to Fred Ferrier that time. Just the eighth play of the drive. First third down of the season. NCAA and T trying to get players off the field. It's a running play to the outside. Isaiah Jacobs with enough for the first down to keep the drive alive for the Blazers. Another one of the co-captains on this offensive unit, Isaiah Jacobs. Maryland transfer and brother of Josh Jacobs. His first touch of the game. They feel like this running back room may be their deepest position overall. after the first down. The rules this year in college football. That clock keeps rolling until we get to the two-minute mark of the second and fourth quarters. A couple of running backs in the backfield this time, and it's Brown trying to get to the outside, and he's wrestled down from behind after going across the 30 for a gain of four. Also impressed with UAB on this opening drive. It's one of the things that Trent Dilfer talked to us about. They wanted to be multiple. You've seen different personnel groupings to get back on the ball with tempo again. Brown is out wide. Jacobs is in the backfield. Play action to Jacobs. Now Zito looking to run. And he's going to be close to that first down. Reach the ball out right as he was going out of bounds. Will depend on the spot. Christopher Allen Jr. pushed him out. And that is enough for a first down. UAB knocking on the door to the red zone after a gain of six. Another good decision by Jacob Zeno. Corner Aaron Harris for a &T went with the primary read. Jacob Zeno worked through his progression, one down to two, realized again he could take off with his legs. Another sound decision by Jacob Zeno. Three backs in the backfield to start things off. They both should one out into the slot. Quick pass out to Jacobs, who... Released out of the backfield. Almost a little counter action there. One of the things to pay attention to early in the year is procedure on both sides of the ball. This play, this, this series of plays for UAB in this opening drive, methodically going down the field, it's been clean, right? There's been no pre-snap or procedure penalties. Good, clean football from UAB right now. Ray Brown in the backfield. Fifth-year player, one of the leaders on this team. It's an end around, and that's going to be another first down for UAB as Strap Hooks took the handoff and got it to the outside. Game seven. Good job on the outside by Dallas Payne. Passing up the first defender, realizing that's not the most dangerous threat, getting upfield. Now run up the middle into the end zone. Touchdown, UAB. A 10-yard touchdown run for Jermaine Brown, Jr. I don't think you could have dialed up a better opening series if you're Trent Dilfer. 
and what UAB just put on the field. Incredibly impressive what they just did. Marched down the field on this opening drive. Clean football like we talked about and capped off by that key offensive player, Jermaine Brown, Jr. So, so a lot of formations, a lot of personnel groupings. Mix of run and pass, a 13-play, 81-yard drive. The extra point from Matt Quinn is good. And UAB takes five and a half minutes off the clock. It takes a 7-0 lead over North Carolina a &T. The Aggies will get their turn when we come back. What a start for Jermaine Brown, Jr. Ray Brown at UAB off to a good start with a 13-play touchdown drive to open the game. Brown with a couple of carries. 19th career rushing touchdown came into the season on the watch list for the Doak Walker Award. On his way to becoming the all-time all-purpose yards leader and a very legitimate chance to become the third 3,000-yard rusher in UAB history. Now it's North Carolina A&T's turn. Jonah DeLang will kick Taman Cook to return for North Carolina A&T. He fields it at the six. Trying to get to the outside. He's got some room. Now cuts it up the field. Cook out to the 35. Great return. A good starting field position for North Carolina A&T. A 30-yard return by Cook. So for the first time, North Carolina A&T and the offense come onto the field with Eli Brickhandler drawing the start. The redshirt freshman from Stockton, California, had just 10 pass attempts a year ago. Played in a couple of games. He was a 5,000-yard passer in high school out on the West Coast. Brickhandler with Wesley Graves in the backfield on his right. And he will come out throwing, and then he'll tuck it and get what he can, just a couple of yards there on first down as Jackson Bratton forced him out of bounds. Jackson Bratton 
a guy that new defensive coordinator Sione Tofo'o said has a chance. He has been a player. Now he's got a chance to be the player, the leader of that defense from his linebacker position. Gain of three, second and seven. Graves gets the handoff, picks his way through out across midfield, still on his feet. That's Wesley Graves on the carry. Gain of 18, rushed for 320 yards on 68 carries last year. Really good job getting a hat on a hat up front by a and in the offensive line. That's kind of the matchup that I'm looking for early in this game, that offensive line unit, the defensive line for a and for uh, the Blazers, that is the side that they feel like the strength of this defense, a matchup to pay attention to early in this game. This is the ninth time in program history that North Carolina A&T has played against an FBS program. They do have three FBS wins. Looking for another one. Rick Handler taking a shot down the field. That's well defended by Colby Dempsey. Take a look at our impact players once again brought to you by Regents. Kenji Christian, a Penn State transfer. Tariq Stewart on the offensive line. And the brothers, McWilliams, Mack and Fish. Fish on the defensive line. And Mack McWilliams back fully healthy as a defensive back. And two of the captains on this team. The only two captains on the defensive side as well. UAB named its captains the Fire Breather Five. Off to the outside. That's Kenji Chris first carry of the ball game. Said Penn State, Virginia Tech transfer. Kenji Christian was a top 40 running back coming out of high school at Pinson Valley here in Alabama. Vincent Brown looking on from the far sideline. Handler from under center with a third and three for North Carolina A&T. And off straight ahead. Good hard run, but not going to be able to get enough for Kenji Christian. I think the second effort there. Did he get enough? Got it. Got across the 35. That's what he needed to get, and he got it for the first down. Really good instinct. Stopped up right here, spins off of it, and it's that second effort right here. Lean forward, and I agree. I think he got to that 35-yard line. What an effort there by Kenji Christian. He's able to shake free of Jackson Bratton, who had the initial contact. So now from the 35, a first down for the Aggies. It's going to be a fun night for Kenji Christian being back in his hometown. Play action to Graves. Brick Handler saw an opening and takes off up the middle. He'll slide forward for a short game. Good decision making here as well. Opens up right in the middle. Pressure in his face off of his left side. Step up, get what you can get, and then get down. One of the things that I love talking to offensive coordinator Chris Young about Eli Brick Handler was, look, sometimes there's some Farvian throws is how he described it. He's got that gunslinger mentality. They wanted to see him play within himself. Decisions like that that'll make offensive coordinator Chris Young happy. Monty Jones in motion across to the top of the screen. Blitz coming and it's a handoff and not much there for Graves. He'll get a couple to bring up another third down. Jackson Bratton on the tackle. Going back to that front seven, especially the defensive line for UAB, that's where they feel like the strength of this unit is, especially with Fish McWilliams, that captain, the anchor there. Trent Dilfer told us, high motor guy, somebody that we think has a chance in the NFL. They need to see some other guys step up around them in depth. I think that's one of the things to pay attention to tonight. But Fish McWilliams in the middle, incredibly important for the Blazers. Down at seven, a tight formation for North Carolina A&T. Candler going hard count, and then he hands it off to Wesley Graves, who has a hole going forward. He's going to be short of the first down, perhaps decision time. Oh, he went across the line to gain. I beg your pardon. And you said it a second ago on the hard count. That was 
really important on that play. It got the defensive line for the Blazers back on their heels. You saw good push up front from a and and we bragged on the offensive line for UAB a second ago. Let's do the same for a and Really good opening possession for this unit. That was a gain of nine on the carry for Graves. Not a straight eye formation. You got a fullback, have a helmet that comes off on one of the offensive linemen. Ray Thornton making the tackle. And, ooh, Cesar Minaro, captain, center, middle of the offensive line, now has to go out for a play after his helmet came off. One of the other things to pay attention to, both of these teams, their opening drives, long, sustained drives, clock already down to four minutes in this first quarter. Reminder for everybody, the rule change in college football, the clock does not stop after first downs now, and you're really seeing the impact of it here in this first quarter. Tenth play of the drive here for North Carolina A&T. Graves hit hard that time. Tyreek Howard, the nose guard, wreaking havoc. And how about that? Your center goes out, and the nose guard blows the play up on the very next play. Got some extracurriculars at the top of the screen, but reading Desmond Little, the rush in coming off the edge, thought Eli Bricklander might have pulled that ball. Looked like maybe he had an opportunity to keep that. Sets up the first long third down for AT. Charlie Dixon is in the backfield alongside Eli Brickhandler. AT is converted twice on third down. They've got third and 10 here. Brickhandler, quarterback draw. It's across the 20. It's dropped after a gain of four. Again, Jackson Bratton, who's been very active on this opening drive. Big play by Jackson Bratton and also Fish McWilliams. This is a great play call by Chris Young. Got man defense on the backside. Love calling a quarterback draw there. If you get past that first level, a lot of times that's where you see quarterback draws bust for big gains because defenders are locked up with their receivers. But good job by UAB getting their defense off the field. Owen Daffer, the East Carolina transfer, on to try a 37-yard field goal straight on. Daffer was a good kicker for East Carolina, and he drives this one down the middle. Had a couple of key misses. Confidence got shaken. Good to see him make his first field goal of the season. Both teams score on their opening possessions. A little over 12 and a half minutes already gone by in the first quarter. We've had two possessions, long drives for both UAB and North Carolina A&T. 
12 plays, 45 yards, 37-yard field goal, capped it by Owen Daffer to get NCA and T on the board. First time in three years that the opening game opponent has scored a point against UAB. Last happened in 2020 after pitching shutouts in the last two seasons in the season opener. UAB on that last possession, we talked about what an effective drive that was. A lot of that had to do with limiting second and third and longs. They had averaged eight yards a play on first down. Staying ahead of the sticks, that helps out your young quarterback, Jacob Zeno. Caleb Brickhouse kicks off for the second time tonight. This is a shorter kick. Cameron Shanks takes it across the 10, looking for space, and he gets out across the 30. Will be marked down at the 33-yard line. A return of 23 yards. UAB ball when we come back. The American on ESPN is presented by It's Game On in St. Pete Clearwater. Proud supporter of the American and home to America's best beaches. Find all the action you're looking for at visitstpeteclearwater.com. Protective Stadium, Birmingham, Alabama. Opening night of the first full weekend of the college football season. Isaiah Jacobs and... Main Brown Jr. both in the backfield. A swing pass to Brown to start the drive. Made of a couple on first down. I love these opportunities early in the game. Alex Mortensen figuring out ways to get the ball in the hands of Jermaine Brown. We saw the pop pass earlier there. A simple screen game. Get Isaiah Jacobs out on the outside as the lead blocker. Alex Mortensen, who you mentioned, the offensive coordinator, was on Nick Saban's staff at Alabama. Going back to 2014, felt like every year when you got into the end of the season and the coaching carousel was spinning, Alex Mortensen's name would come up, but he stayed put in Tuscaloosa until he thought it was the right opportunity. Long relationship with Trent Dilfer. 
And Alex Mortensen said a lot of reasons that he came here to UAB. Loved the culture that the program had. Jacobs and Brown in the backfield. Third down for the Blazers. Edo with time across the middle. Pass complete for a first down out to the 46-yard line. That was Jermaine Brown. Jermaine Brown out of the backfield, really treated like a receiver here. Almost a skinny post over the middle of the field. More opportunities and ways that the Blazers are making it very clear they're going to get the ball in the hands of number one early and often. Seen a lot of different formations already from UAB. This time it's a handoff to Brown. He saw a crease and shot through it out to the 45 for a gain of nine on first down for the Blazers. Very cold. This is a good tackle coming up from the linebacker spot. Looked like for a chance there, almost a chance for Jermaine Brown to break that. Third down coming up. A loss on that play. Ty Williams, Jr., the strong safety coming up. Another and good making the tackle. Sorry, Rich, another good sure-handed tackle from Ty Williams coming down. Both of those plays right there get you to a third and short. Really good open field tackling by Avarian Cole and Ty Williams, Jr. And that will take us to the end of the first quarter. So two and a half possessions with that running clock in the first quarter. Not stopping on made first downs. The debut for Trent Dilfer. The debut for Vincent Brown. After one, it's UAB 7, North Carolina a and 3. We're back to Birmingham after this. Trent Dilfer was happy 
but he was restless in retirement. And he said that he, with faith playing a big role in his life, he prayed for direction and opportunity. And uh, he ended up in the coaching business, first at the high school level. Told us in 2017 he played over 200 rounds of golf, and it was great, but it was very unfulfilling. Matt Hasselbeck called him as he was taking his daughter to Louisville. She was transferring, and uh, it was a volleyball trip. And Hasselbeck called him and said, there's a, a school in Nashville, Tennessee, that's looking for a head coach. And Dilfer said, man, I'm on it. But he thought he was looking for somebody to help them find a head coach. Right. Hasselbeck called him back an hour later. He's like, no, no, Trent, they want you to be the head coach. And he laughed at it. He just laughed it off. He said, well, you got to at least go say hi to them just kind of to be nice. Goes for a meeting in Nashville at Lipscomb Academy. Walks away from that meeting intrigued, but still not planning on taking a high school head coaching job. This is a guy that has had opportunities in college, has had opportunities in the NFL, and he's turned all of them down. Eight and nine there for another first down. And they said, well, would you at least go pray about it and talk to your family? So he went home and he talked to his daughter and he talked to his wife and they said, you have to do this, let's move. And so they picked up and they moved to Nashville. He did so without ever watching any film on Lipscomb Academy. He said when he watched film of the previous year the very first time, he cried. Like actual tears. And not the good tears. Not the good tears. They ended up winning seven games in that first year and making it to the state semifinals. In year two, they got to the state championship game. And then they reeled off a 26-1 record with back-to-back -back state championships in the next two seasons. And now Trent Dilfer finds himself as the head coach of the UAB Blazers who are knocking on the door of the red zone with second and five. Snap a little off, messed up the timing. Not bad enough, though. Brown out in the open field, takes it inside the 10-yard line. A first down and goal to goal for UAB. More Jermaine Brown split out on the edge. Like the motion coming across as well by Dallas Payne. Tino out of the gun. Hands off. That's Isaiah Jacobs on the carry. Janoris Robertson on the tackle. Here for North Carolina, a and slow getting up. I think that's Mitchell Etheridge. Mitchell Etheridge, the third, number 37 down. Anytime a guy goes down like this early in the season, you just hope it's a cramp. A warm night, but not nearly as bad as it could be. He's hurting. We'll take a timeout. We're back right after this.
Trent Dilfer played his college ball at Fresno State, drafted by Tampa Bay, sixth pick overall in 1994. Taylor went on to have a really, really solid NFL career. Well, he's won everywhere he's been, right? And I think there's not – we don't see head coaches get hired in this manner. I think that's why there's, there's so much attention on Trent Dilfer because he didn't go about it the normal way. But you have seen in the last few years high school coaches, I think about Jeff Trailer at UTSA, Joey McGuire at Texas Tech, that moved from high school to college, and you've seen the success they've had as well. Zeno, 11 of 12, throwing the football, but he pulls it down here, takes off running, spins his way across the five-yard line, and we'll have third down coming up. So far tonight for UAB, 12 pass attempts and 13 run attempts. Really balanced, a lot of different personnel groupings. You've seen motion, tempo again, which we get right now. Brown in the backfield, gets the handoff straight ahead into the end zone. Touchdown number two of the night for Jermaine Brown, Jr. We talked about at the open how important Jermaine Brown Jr. would be to this offense. You've seen it already in this first half. Two big touchdowns, first two opening drives for UAB, right down the field, long sustained drives. If you're Alex Mortensen, Trent Dilfer, this offensive staff, not a better start that you could have asked for for the Blazers. 13 plays, 67 yards, a little over five minutes off the clock and the 20th career rushing touchdown for Jermaine Brown, Jr. Matt Quinn bangs it through. UAB two for two on its two offensive possessions with a pair of touchdowns. Fourteen three, UAB leading it over North Carolina A and T. Twelve oh seven to go in the second quarter. The Aggies have only had one possession in the ball game. Jermaine Brown has been outstanding so far for UAB. Well, I really have I've loved what Alex Mortensen, the game plan that he's brought in, where he's not giving A and T many of the same looks. You're seeing cluster into the boundary you're seeing running backs get split out a lot of times Jermaine Brown you're getting guys put in different situations where it's forcing a and T to be really disciplined with their eyes and then also really impressed with the offensive line play from UAB up front they're getting a hat on a hat they're getting good movement Jacob Zeno playing well early like we said before we went to break if you're a Blazers fan you couldn't have asked for a better start David Cook takes this one five yards deep, and so the possession will begin at the 25. Ray Brown Jr., a little bit of everything. Fly sweep to open the game. This is, they split him out, runs a seam pattern. Obviously, we know what an explosive runner he is. Another screen out to the wide side of the field. And this is really, when you talk about transferring up to the next level, this is what the NFL is looking for, the ability to run 
and catch the football out of the backfield, and he's displaying both right now. You get a look at the full running back room, and again, when we talk to offensive coordinator Alex Mortensen and also running backs coach Henley Brigham, they said, man, our running back room is, is the deepest we've ever seen here. We feel like this is a, a room that we're going to have to really work hard to, to spread the football around and get these guys their touches. See Brown a little less than 700 yards away from becoming the third 3,000-yard rusher in school history. Rick Handler trying to go stiff arm, and he spins his way across the 30-yard line to the 31. Gain of six on first down. Good to see him pull this here. There was a play on the opening drive. I felt like he could have pulled the ball. I love the stiff arm there from the quarterback as well. Well. We expect to see K.J. White in this game tonight at some point. Vincent Brown of the coaching staff at A&T told us you will see him this year. Probably in the first game, but they also wanted to see how Brick Handler handled it. He pulls this and runs for a first down across the 35. Jackson Bratton on the tackle for UAB. Look for a &T here soon to take some sort of shot play. UAB's playing a lot of single high safety, a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage. Obviously with a &T running the football as much as they are right now, get those bodies close to the line of scrimmage. Expect some sort of counter off of that. So play action, try and take a shot over top. And off on first down and Good run there into the open field by Kenji Christian. Goes across the 40 in UAB territory. Wrestled down at the 39 after a gain of 26. That's the second time the Kenji Christian has done a, a great job breaking the first tackle at the point of contact. This time breaking a tackle from Jackson Bratton, who we've talked about has had a good first half. But love the effort from Kenji Christian at the point of contact. Breaking off, spinning away, breaking it into a chunk play. Vincent Brown, three-time All-Pro with the New England Patriots. In his first head coaching job, Rick Handler, long throw out to the far sideline. That one is complete to Amante Jones, the sophomore from Chesapeake, Virginia. Gain of seven on first down there. And that may not look like a lot here. It's just a seven-yard completion. But look how far this ball has to travel in the air, and it's on a dime. That's a really good throw by Eli Brickhandler. And what you want to see out of your young quarterback, that accuracy on the full field, either come back or out, that's a really difficult throw for college quarterbacks. You were a physical runner when you played. You got to like seeing a fullback in the game for North Carolina <laughs> A&T. The big man Malik Ward at 6'1", 260. Offset just a touch. There's a handoff, and Christian trying to bounce it to the outside. Not much there on second down. And even in tackles for loss or tackles for no gain, Kenji Christian making Harry people Howard miss. Been impressed with him early made Charlie Gooda miss up front. And another so a third down coming up here for UAB. Two of three to start the game on third down. That was on their opening drive. Candler in trouble, able to stay on his feet. Passes incomplete, good coverage intended. That time for number 15, that's Christian McDonald. We're in that tweener area on the field. As you can see the A&T staff talking through, probably a little too far outside of kicking range, fourth and short. Looks like the offense is gonna stay on the field here. J. Mays had good coverage. Pretty good awareness there by Brick Handler to be able to stand in and deliver that ball. Kenji Christian in the backfield off the right hip of Brick Handler. Looking to throw. Pressure gets to the outside. Brick Handler trying to make a play with his feet, and he's wrestled down at the 35-yard line. A loss on the play. It is UAB football. Big hit. Everett Russo out of nowhere. It looks like there for a second.
And Eli Brickhandler, first thing, great elusiveness in the pocket, extends the play and gives his offense a chance. But right here, get the ball out of your hands, find somebody open. Left side of your screen, you see Everett Rousseau come flying in to make the tackle. That's an excellent play by 27, coming down from his Will linebacker spot to get his defense off the field. That pressure started with Fish McWilliams in the middle of that defensive line. He was the first one to get a hand on Brick Hamlin. They had to kind of get away from that. At front seven again. Watch right here. Fish McWilliams, good job getting pressure. But, man, Eli Brickhandler, impressed with him early in this game. But right here, get the ball out of your hands. Give one of your receivers a chance. And that closing speed from Everett Russo, that's impressive there from 27. UAB back at it offensively. Jacob Zeno, let's talk about him for a second. Coaches said the last three days of practice were the best three days in the last nine months. They said he was confident, arm looked alive, very comfortable running this offense. What have you seen from him so far? I think he's operated this offense really effectively and really as a leader, the point guy, what you expect out of your quarterback. Right, he's, he's the point guard here, getting everybody lined up in and out of these different personnel groupings. They're on time, no procedure issues, and then most importantly, taking care of the football. Really, through this first half, has only had one errant throw. 12 of 13 for 85 yards. Zeno keeps it. He's got a lead blocker, and he'll go out of bounds without taking a hit. Picks up the first down. Bryce Damas out on the edge. Really good job and patient running by Jacob Zeno. There was a chance where he could tuck this ball up the field right here. You see how he sort of slow plays it on the right side of the screen. But a good job again by 48. Bryce Damas getting out in front as the lead blocker. UAB, two possessions, two touchdowns. This pass is complete. T.J. Jones on the reception, and he's brought down. He goes across the 40-yard line. I think one of the things I love to see out of wide receiver groups is the ability to block well on the perimeter in the screen game. We've seen a lot of that early in this game. That's effective and really important if you're going to be effective in that screen game. Play action. Zeno looking to take a shot down the field. He completes it at the 25 down to the 22-yard line. Tejon Palmer on the reception. His second catch of the night. This one good for 18. Now this is an Alec... This is an Alex Mortensen special that they pulled from Alabama. It's a pivot off of a levels concept. Tua was incredible at this at Alabama. you got to protect a long time for it. That's why a lot of people can't run it. But a really good job in progression there by Jacob Zeno. Love to see the progression of them taking that concept from Alabama and implement it here at UAB. 191 yards of offense so far for UAB. Two drives, two long drives resulting in a couple of touchdowns. And I think they're taking a look here to see if that was, in fact, a fumble. With the review on the field, we'll take a timeout. UAB in front.
So there was a review for a fumble at the end of that last catch by Tajon Palmer, and this may be good news for North Carolina A&T. But it looks like this ball comes out, and Ty Williams Jr. comes in from the safety spot last second and punches this out on this angle. You'll see it from the left side of the screen right here, and this is before Tajon Palmer's knees have hit the ground, or knee has hit the ground, and that ball is out. Immediately when this happened, the A&T defenders started pointing in the opposite direction. I think this is going to get overturned. I think this is going to be Aggie football. You had Karan Prunty and A.J. Dupree and Ty Williams all involved in the play. We're going to hear from our referee in just a moment, Nate Black, after the long review. After further review, the runner lost firm control of the ball prior to his knee hitting the ground with a clear recovery and immediate action by the defense. We first down, North Carolina A&T. So the first turnover of the game is caused by a great defensive play by North Carolina A&T. UAB coughs it up. And they were driving what looked like on their way to maybe their third touchdown and three drives. And the way you described that I think is exactly right. This was more an effort play by the defense for A&T, specifically Ty Williams Jr., than it was necessarily obviously a mistake by Tejon Palmer, but really I think it's more to be celebrated by A&T and what a huge turnover that is for their defense to get their offense back on the field. All right, here's the freshman K.J. White from Newport News, Virginia, getting his first opportunity, a handoff straight ahead. And a gain of a couple on first down. Kevin White, the quarterback. Wesley Graves, the tailback there. He described him as exceptionally talented. Like we talked about at the Open, they feel like there will be a spot for him somewhere on the field throughout the season. Even if throughout the year Eli Brickhandler is the guy at quarterback, he's just too good of an athlete to not include in some capacity. Chris Young, the offensive coordinator for North Carolina A&T, told us that K.J. White is mature beyond his year, said he doesn't get rattled. It's just simply a development thing. And they said some of that development may have to happen on the field. Third down coming up here for A&T. And a third and medium test the play calling here from Chris Young with your now true freshman quarterback in the game. Do you allow him to try and throw for this first down, or will we see him use his legs to try and pick this up? Third and five for the Aggies. A team that lost nine players in the transfer portal in the offseason. to throw, feels the pressure. You can see some of that athleticism, but pretty good athletes in green jerseys as well. Forced out of bounds, well short of the first down, and so punting time for North Carolina A&T. There goes Jackson Bratton, look right in the middle of your screen. Linebacker in pursuit. It's fourth down. We've called his name a lot in this first half. Good job by that UAB defense as well, bailing out your offense. You can get the turnover, Get a good quick three and out. Get your offense back on the field. Outside of that fumble, really, that's the only blemish for the Blazers in this first half. Seven tackles in the first half for Jackson Bratt. First punt of the ball game, and it is not a very good one. Shank out of bounds. See exactly where they mark it. UAB going to get this football on the plus side of the field when we come back.
Saturday, it's an AAC football triple header on ESPNU. Start your day at noon Eastern with SMU hosting Louisiana Tech. Then it's Cal at North Texas at 4 Eastern, and you can wrap things up with number 24 Tulane's home opener against South Alabama. All three games on ESPNU and the app. Alongside Taylor McCarg, I'm Richard Cross, 430 left in this first half. Detective Stadium in Birmingham. What a night for Jacob Zeno. 14 of 15 so far for 109 yards in his season debut. On the ground, that's Jacobs. Positive yardage on first down. He'll pick up four. We've seen more odd front or three down linemen for A&T than I think we were expecting. And really, I think that's part of why UAB is running the ball so effectively. If there's only three down linemen. You're not getting a lot of pressure from the linebacker spot from A&T as well. Jacobs in the backfield with Zeno. Jermaine Brown in motion now, coming toward the backfield. And it's Brown that gets the handoff, trying to get to the outside. It's his way across the 40. Got 37. He got third and short. And four there for Brown. Going to take the ball across the 35-yard line. Knows the football just shy of the 36. UAB scored a long drives on its first two possessions. Blazers four of four on third down. That quarterback sneak straight ahead. Offensive line, go get us a couple of yards, and they did just that. This is an offensive line for UAB that lost all five starters from a year ago. Brady Wilson, the center, kind of the leader of this group. He's got the most experience, and that's 13 games played with seven career starts prior to tonight. You know, a play action. Looking down the field, and it's caught. Amari Thomas with the sliding catch at the 15-yard line for a gain of 16 and a first down. Love that route combination as well. Amari Thomas looking like he's running the post route and then break this back off to the sideline. He's Again, these are staples from that Alabama offense that Alex Mortensen has brought with him here at UAB. throw far side bubble screen and that is defended well by the Aggies Ron Prunty leading the way you had B.J. Turner with the tackle the screen game for UAB really that's the first time I can think of where it was stopped for either no gain or a loss really to this point a good job by UAB blocking on the outside the answer there from A&T shedding blocks on the perimeter from the corner spot that's how you stop those perimeter screens inside two minutes to go second quarter Clock would stop on the first down. Trent Dilfer trying to get a timeout, and he'll get it on the sideline before the ball is snapped. Well, he was sprinting down the UAB sideline toward the official at the line of scrimmage. Coming up at halftime, we will take a look around the American, have first half highlights from this ball game and stats and analysis. We'll send you to the studio after the break. It's the ESPN Plus Halftime Report presented by Regions Bank. Other than the turnover, Trent Dilfer going to feel pretty good about this first half? Well, I think you have to. I mean, it's been very clean. Like you mentioned, the turnover really the only blemish. But on both sides of the ball, I think the offense specifically, very few mental errors, clean football. The defensive side, the only thing I think you can really point to would be open field tackling. We've seen from the running back spot, a and T with Kenji Christian making people miss. I think that's the spot that if I'm on the defensive side, I'd really want to focus on. Swing pass. That's Jacobs on the catch, dragging guys down to the 15-yard line. Very on Cole. Shedding blocks again. We just talked about how you shut down those perimeter screens. This is a guy that Josh Seidenberg, defensive coordinator for A&T, said this is one of our best players. He, he's going to be special for us this year. You've got a glimpse of it right there. Cole, one of just three returning starters from a season ago for A&T. Eight different receivers have a catch in this ball game tonight. There's a flag 
penalty marker on the play. That is the first flag of the game. Offside. Defense, number three. Moving in the neutral zone, causing the offensive player to react. Five-yard penalty, third down. It's Joshua Isia, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina. I think the quick motion from Bryce Damas is what drew him offsides. Helps UAB tremendously, gets that to a third and medium. Isaiah Jacob and Jermaine Brown both in the backfield. Zeno changing, changing the play. Brown releases and the handoff is to Jacobs and he goes across the five-yard line for a first down. First and goal for UAB on a carry of six yards with 52 seconds left in the first half. That's the faith that they have in this running back room. You use Jermaine Brown almost as a decoy, bring him out and move him back. A third and five and you run inside zone to pick it up. It speaks to how deep this running back room is. Jacob stays in the game. Zeno looking to throw. Takes a shot toward the back corner. What a throw. What a catch. Touchdown, UAB. Tajon Palmer with his first touchdown reception of the season. Great concentration by Tajon Palmer. This is not bad coverage by a and I actually thought Jacob Zeno could have gotten the ball earlier. Could have gotten it off just a little bit earlier. But Tejon Palmer reacting, going back over the corner to bring that back for the touchdown. What a play from 19. Eight plays, 45 yards. Quinn on for the extra point. A couple of rushing touchdowns in this first half for Brown. And now the touchdown reception for Tejon Palmer. Fifth year senior. Extra points good. It's now 21 to 3 with 25 seconds remaining until the half. All right, here's your throw. I thought again this could have gotten out just a little bit early. It's in a good spot. But man, I mean, really, this is about Tejon Palmer going up, high pointing the ball, keeping it up and away from the defender. Get another look at it here. Has to come back a little bit. The coverage from Ty Williams Jr. is not bad. He's in a good spot. It's just an incredible play there by Tejon Palmer. Palmer was honorable mention All-Conference USA last season at 30 catches, a couple of touchdowns. Jacob Zeno, what a start to the year. 18 of 19 for a buck 29 and a touchdown in the first half. It has been in total control, like we've talked about. They've mixed up their looks quite a bit. The screen game has helped a lot, there's no doubt. But when they've asked him to take the downfield shot plays, he's hit them, and that red zone completion for a touchdown to cap it off, I think that'll feel good going into half as well. Tuck watches this one go into the end zone. So out to the 25-yard line, just 25 seconds remaining in this first half. Because of the turnover, you, you don't say that UAB is perfect, but even on the turnover, it was a good play, a good throw, a good catch, and then an effort play by a &T, and UAB was very much marching on that drive. And I think you have to be happy if you're Trent Dilfer with how your team responded. You know, every team's going to face adversity, specifically after turnovers, but to get a three and out, then they also had the fortune of a and shanking a punt out of bounds, really short punt. They ended up getting the ball back back on A&T side of the field. It was only about a 15-yard difference all in. So, yeah, it was yes, just a that 20 was a 20-yard punt. That was the negative for the first half, and they overcame it quickly with another score. Rick Handler gives it to Kenji Christian, and that may do it for the first half. North Carolina A&T. Field goal in their first possession at a fourth down play where they were trying to keep a drive alive. UAB got tons of pressure on that. And they couldn't do anything. Had the three and out after forcing the turnover. So, you know, a monster first half. 18 of 19 for 129 yards and a touchdown. Pretty good for Trent Dill.
Dilfer and UAB in game number one. Good for Trent Dilfer, really good for, for Jacob Zeno. That was who I think you and I had our eyes on specifically as a young quarterback. I thought he operated that offense really well. Interesting to see how much we see him in the second half. It is now time for us to send you to the studio in the ESPN Plus Halftime Report presented by Regents Bank. Here are Kit and Steve.
21 to 3. UAB leading it over North Carolina A&T. A big first half for Jermaine Brown, Jr. Couple of rushing touchdowns, Taylor. We expected to see a lot of Jermaine Brown, but I don't think he could have dialed up a better first half for their leading rusher returning. You see a lot of him early and often and then capped off by the big touchdown to Tejon Palmer. I thought it was close to a perfect first half for UAB as we take a look at the first half stats. Really balanced. You touched on that earlier. Total offense, I thought for UAB, really was clicking on both sides. For A&T, you got to figure out some way to get the passing game going. Just seven yards in that first half. Uh, the, only the one turnover for UAB it was really a, a pretty clean first half for the Blazers. Jacob Zeno, 18 of 19 in the first half, 129 yards and a touchdown. But about as well as you can play over on the defensive side. They will be called a bunch in the first half. Jackson Bratton. He had eight first-half tackles. That is one off his career high. So North Carolina A&T, after the touchback, will start at the 25-yard line. Alongside Taylor McCart, I'm Richard Cross. Good to be with you on the opening night of the first full weekend of college football. Got a little bit of an appetizer last weekend. Florida and Utah playing tonight over on ESPN. Utah leading that game 17 to 3. That's at halftime out in Salt Lake City. Eli Brickhandler back out to start this second half at quarterback. You got one series from KJ White in the first half. Bleak Ward is in the game. Big fullback. A little bit of confusion getting lined up. Play clock down to five. The Candler, high snap. He's able to corral it. And the pass is incomplete, intended for Tamon Cook. Couldn't haul it in. Still got popped at the end. Did by Ray Thornton, who looked a little shaken up. He's coming off the field gingerly. I'm interested to see also, do we get another look at K.J. White early in this third quarter? I thought just get another look right there if Ray Thornton, hopefully he's okay. But for, for K.J. White, just had the one series. It was a three and out. What we described to us from that offensive staff and offensive coordinator Chris Young was what a dynamic athlete he is, and, and we really didn't see that showcased in that drive that he was in. Interested to see how early do we see him back in at quarterback. Back on the ground for A&T, and Kenji Christian is dropped after a very short gate. Actually, it's going to be a loss of a yard. A.J. Brown from the star spot. Flying downhill. That team pursuit looked like Everett Russo that we saw in that first half on that fourth down. The team speed for UAB showcasing again. Two of five on third down of the first half for the Aggies. Third and long here. Rick Handler being pressured. It's away and is popped, driven out of bounds. Loss on the play, trying to make something happen. Nobody opened downfield. They got him with the corner blitz. Look on the right side of the screen. You see number seven, B.J. Mays, the incarnate word transfer coming in. Unblocked. That corner blitz for young quarterbacks, that's the hardest to pick up because oftentimes into the boundary, you're not expecting them to come. You don't have protection going to that boundary defender. Untouched, B.J. Mays is off the edge. Gets their defense off the field. Ball back to the Blazers. Also seven on the play, so a punt coming here. Caleb Brickhouse. Much better punt this time. He shanked his first one in the game. A Witherspoon on the return for UAB into plus territory. Stays on his feet across the 40. He's dropped at the 38-yard line. Outstanding field position for UAB. Coming up for their first drive of the second half. 43-yard punt, 22 on the return. Penalty down back, almost to the 13-yard line. Personal foul, leaping, receiving team number 23. 15-yard penalty, first down. They changed the positioning of a couple of the referees on the field. Do you see the leap in there? There it is. 
clear as day. It's a player safety issue, and it's really a player safety issue for the person that's jumping. It's not so much for the punt team or protecting the, per the personal protector or the punter. It's really for that the defensive player, offensive player, turn defensive player that's jumping. Oftentimes, and you saw the fall there, they're trying to eliminate the injuries that came from that exact play. To make a correction, that was Mac McWilliams on the punt return. All of that for naught. Regardless, it is a new set of downs for North Carolina A&T. So a costly penalty for UAB. And really one of the first mental errors that we've seen from the Blazers all night. So Rick Handler back out on the field. Wesley Graves in the game and running back to the left of Rick Handler. Play action, trying to get him outside, got a little bit of space, passes complete out across the 40-yard line. Tamon Cook on the reception, gained nine yards on first down there for a and We saw a and open with that on their first possession, trying to move the pocket, get the quarterback outside, getting more of that single high safety, a lot of bodies close to the line of scrimmage. I like that for your young quarterback. Move the pocket, give him simple reads. There's only two receivers in that combination. So it's one down to two, get the ball out of his hands quick, and if there's nothing there, both for Brick Handler and K.J. White, they can take off and use their legs. The catch is under further review. So we're going to take a look to make sure that he caught that ball, completed the catch to the ground. That was, as it stands right now, only the second completion of the game for Brick Handler. With the review, we'll take a timeout. 12.45 left in the third quarter. UAB in front, 21-3. No bad news for A&T after review. An incomplete pass, and so second and ten, that completion is erased. So still just one completed pass in the game for Eli Rickhandler. In fairness, they have not thrown it a lot. 
18-point lead for UAB with 12.45 to go. Still the opening drive of the second half for NCA and T. Takes a shot down the field. McCandler overthrows everybody. Third down coming up. Uh, it forced there from Eli Brickley and Handler. And like you just said, they're, they're trying to get something in the passing game going. But the corner bails. Tamon Cook is the drop-off receiver. That ball needs to go out to 18. Tamon Cook right now. But I get it. It's a young quarterback. They're trying to make something happen, trying to get some momentum in the passing game. But if you're trying, Chris Young, trying to instill this in your young quarterback decision-making, take the checkdowns when they're there. Colby Dempsey was step for step in coverage, had safety coming over the top as well. So third and long for North Carolina A&T. Rick Handler pressure, swings it out far side. That's a completion and going to be short of the first down. Out of bounds at the 40-yard line. Cook on the catch after a gain of eight. Rick Handler lucky to get this off. Trying to do a back to the, look into the boundary for the screen, then get it out to the field. <laughs> they turn loose Desmond Little. Usually you want some sort of shiver, get one hand on him from the tackle, but they turn Desmond Little loose. A good job by Brick Handler just stepping up and getting it away. Not enough for the first down. UAB, another shot here. Pretty good field position likely. So Mac McWilliams back to return the punt. Good punt this time. High spiraling drives McWilliams all the way back to the 10-yard line. And that's where UAB will go to work offensively. A punt of 50 yards with no return. A little bit different look in the American this year. Charlotte, FAU, North Texas, Rice, UAB, and UTSA all making the transition into the American Conference this season. Yard at half, seven new head coaches in the league. It's going to be a fun year to follow the American Conference. There's no doubt. UTSA leading this group. It's a ranked second in the preseason poll for the American. That's a group that feels like even stepping up from Conference USA into the American, they really feel like they can win this conference in their first year. Lee Weatherspoon into the game for the first time tonight. Weatherspoon from Birmingham, North Jackson High School, started his college career at Mississippi State, transferred back to his home city. The graphic a second ago on, on the new additions from Conference USA, also really interested in what FAU looks like under Tom Herman. That's a guy that everywhere he went before he got to Texas, one recruited at a high level. I think that's a team that very quickly could turn around their talent. Witherspoon on the catch, lined up out wide that time, and to spin his way out to the 14-yard line. Made a five on the play. Witherspoon comes out of the game. Isaiah Jacobs is back in. He may be on the road next weekend against Georgia Southern. Trouble. Flipped away. And not much happening there. Jacob Zito trying to make something happen. He did avoid the sack. Pressure that time from Deterius Glover in the middle of that defensive line for a and And a and returns with their own version of a corner blitz. They bring Karan Prunty from the boundary. He's really what starts this pressure. You can see Jacob Zeno starting to get a little bit of happy feet. Good job getting the ball away to Isaiah Jacobs. You know, one of the things we didn't talk about, that first half, all the completions that Jacob Zeno had, really effective first half, but they were all short completions. Average just seven yards of completion, not really testing A&T downfield. You saw there on a third and long having to take more of a shot play and weren't able to get it off. Patrick Foley punts it away. First time that UAB is punted in this game and good field position. Coming up for North Carolina A&T when we come back.
21-3 UAB leading it over North Carolina A&T. We are in Birmingham, so we need a bite of something to eat while in Birmingham. <laughs> Taylor was hungry at the half, so here we go. How about Kaneka sausage dogs? We get the uh, the onions and the peppers on there with a nice little spicy mustard. This is just for you, courtesy of the chef here at Protective hey, Stadium. This, this right. looks fantastic. Gotta go let's, mustard let's get on. some of this on here. Get some on yours. There we go. I appreciate fine folks from the protective I'm going to wait and not here. eat on camera. All right, all right, I'll do it on camera. There you go. So Kaneka sausage, loved locally. What do you think? Pretty good. Not too bad. It, 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 it really is awkward when you eat on camera, isn't it? <laughs> but it's good. KJ White back into the game. He's taking a shot deep down the field. Nobody home. Flag comes in. And that may be a penalty on UAB. Here, go ahead. You got the, you got the little uh, the little cutting board. Oh, you want me to do it? Yeah, on go camera ahead. Also? Yeah. No. Big hot dog guy. Pass interference. Defense number 16. 15-yard penalty and an automatic first down. All right, so the first down for North Carolina a t Here we go. It's good. The, uh, the mustard... Good touch. Really nice. 10 out of 10. Would eat again. Big fan. Yeah, that's good stuff. Thanks to the folks at Protective Stadium. The Kaneka Sausage Dogs. You make it in town for a UAB game, highly recommend. Especially with the onions and peppers. Graves on the carry and he has wrestled down for a loss. Michael Moore. Really is hard to chew and talk at the same time. <laughs> That's good stuff. Why is Russ taking the, the dogs away, though? I guess we'll get those back in the break. <laughs> Second and 12. You like it? Just on the fly. Bite of Birmingham? A little alliteration there for you. <laughs> K.J. White, coaches say he is a tremendous athlete. You got to hurry. Not going to get this off in time. And that's some of the development that they're talking about with the young quarterbacks. Number 10, five-yard penalty, second down. And, and it happens. You're right. It, it's, one, it's one of the things, that, especially when you have quarterbacks that are splitting time like this, going back and forth, trading series. It's hard to get in a rhythm. Freshman quarterback, one of the things, you have got to be the guy that is keeping track of the play clock. He'll learn from that. So now second and 17 for K.J. White trying to extend the play. Flag comes down on the far side of the field. White goes out of bounds at the 32. Check the marker. We're to get defensive offsides here. Okay. Get that penalty yardage back from the delay of game. Offside, defense, number eight, five-yard penalty, second down. Desmond Little, linebacker walked up, just got a little antsy, trying to bring the pressure. So back to second and 12. And it may not have looked like much, but Jackson Bratton came untouched. K.J. White made him miss easily. That's that elusiveness that we've talked about. Here's Kenji Christian trying to get to the outside. Ball comes out, and... And it's recovered by, well, who's got it? North Carolina, a and I think. Or at least they had a chance. Forced fumble by the aforementioned Jackson Bratton. I thought Ike Rowell from the safety spot looked like he may have been the first one to have a crack at it. Still no signal from the officials. Ball was on the ground for a while. on the field is a fumble. It was recovered by the defense, but the defender was out of bounds. By rule, the ball will be returned to the spot of the fumble. It's third down. A break there for the Aggies, as you hear from our referee, Nate Blake. Kenji Christian hit there and struck by Jackson Bratton, who we've called his name a lot tonight. I mean, it's interesting that they're 
saying it was recovered by the defense. As best we could tell, it looked like Nicholas Dobson from A&T is the one that came out of the pile with the ball. Damian Miller causing the fumble. Ooh, there at the end. Looked like Howard was in That's bail. Right. But regardless, A&T football and a sack. Back to the 30-yard line. That is a loss of three yards. Nakia Eason, Jr. records the first sack. Coming off the right side of your screen, just beats Tariq Stewart, the West Virginia transfer. A really good individual effort there. Sets up a fourth and long. We get a field goal attempt here from A&T from distance. It's a 49-yard try for Owen Daffer. The 48-yard field goal attempt. He scored 96 points two years ago at East Carolina. He hits this one well, but not well enough. That is short, and it is still a 21-3 game. 7.09 to go in the third. Seven oh nine left in the third quarter. Jacob Zeno in the offense for UAB back on the field. Same score as we had at half, 21-3. Zeno with a handoff, and that's Jermaine Brown. Look at Brown go out across the 45 to the 46-yard line. Again, a 15, and a first down for the Blazers. And good vision from Jermaine Brown, Jr. It's set up to the play side, to the field. Watch this stick the foot right in the ground, work back cut back lane and get vertical. I mean, he really has done everything well tonight. Everything they've asked of him, run game, catching the ball out of the backfield, good vision, just a, a complete back. Pass is complete across midfield, short gate on first down. You saw Zeno frustrated with himself there. Puts the ball on the back hip. Receiver has to go down to catch that. He knows you put that on that upfield shoulder. It gives him a chance to get upfield, get some yards after catch. Iverson hooks on the catch for UAB. A 
That comes in. So a gain of four, then a five-yard penalty, so second and 11. A year ago, this UAB offense had four games in which they rolled up over 500 yards of total offense. We asked Alex Mortensen what he wanted to see from this team. He said he wants the offense to trust their preparation and execute. Not sure the UAB coaches are going to be thrilled with the way the offense has come out of the locker room, but that first half kind of felt like those two things that Mort wanted to see have happened. Yeah, it was crisp in the first half. It does feel like start and stop in this second half in this third quarter, but for this staff and, and for what UAB is trying to accomplish here in, in this opening game, I think there's a lot that they're going to be happy with. American fans don't miss a second of the action this fall on ESPN+. Plus. Over 120 men's and women's soccer games, plus over 180 volleyball matches for you to pick from. ESPN Plus is also the home of AAC All Access features, including Mining for Greatness following Charlotte football all season long. Catch the action right here on ESPN Plus. Dump off pass complete down to the 45 yard line. That is close to a first down. That was Dallas Payne making the catch, the tight end. I think one of the things I've also been impressed with tonight is Jacob Zeno targeting a, a lot of different guys in this offense. It hasn't just been Jermaine Brown as we get tempo on third and short. Across the 40, that's a first down. Isaiah Jacobs on the carry. Jacob Zeno is connected on 19 straight pass attempts. Looks like Jazeer Staten is down from the safety spot for a and to see him getting off on his own power. You know, Isaiah Jacobs, transfer from Maryland, also Independence Community College in Kansas. His brother, Josh Jacobs of the Raiders, is a guy that they've been really excited about since he's been here. And he's a captain, like we've talked about alongside Jermaine Brown, two captains out of that running back room. But what a compliment he is. And we've seen a lot of two running back sets because of that. I think that's a staple that you're going to see for this UAB offense all season is both of those guys in the game. Josh Jacobs had some success playing in the state of Alabama. First and 10, 39. Another Isaiah good Jacobs first down Walker. carry for Isaiah Jacobs. UAB going fast again, back on the ball. Jacobs averaging a little better than four yards a carry. They fake it to him. Shot down the field, got a chance. Touchdown! What a great throw by Jacob Zeno to TJ Jones. A 34-yard touchdown pass. The only thing we hadn't seen tonight, right? The deep shot play over the top. They finally hit it. Good, patient play action. And this ball could not have been more perfect from Jacob Zeno if he had walked it down there and handed it to TJ Jones. Second touchdown pass of the night for Jacob Zeno. Trent Dilfer and the offensive staff went back and watched some of Jacob Zeno on the field a year ago. They thought they saw the potential to be really good. That UTSA game in particular where he threw for over 330 yards in his second start kind of provided them what they needed to see. And Trent Dilfer used interesting language. He said, we're not going to have a quarterback competition, so we're going to have a quarterback revelation. Maybe a little coach speaky, but he said, our starting quarterback is going to reveal himself to this team. And Zeno did that in the offseason, and he is paying that decision off on opening night. Absolutely, and that piece that we just saw, the deep ball, really was the only thing the offense hadn't displayed yet. We talked about how short those completions were in the first half, just averaging seven yards of completion. At some point, this offense will get tested. It may not be tonight, but they will be tested where it's not just quick games and screens. And if you're a Blazers fan, you got to be happy to see they have the ability to hit that shot play and look how accurate that was from Jacob Zeno. 23 of 24 
180 yards, two touchdowns. Look, I'm not smart enough to know how exactly to calculate quarterback rating, but his is 186.3 tonight, <laughs> and I think that's good. Is that good? Short kick this time. Returnable, taken at the 12. Out across the 20, A.J. Dupree brought down at about the 22. Flag in on the play as well. I can't tell if that's a flag or if that's just a piece of a A&T jersey that came off. Well, they're wearing white jerseys, and that was yellow on the field, so. Well. No flag? I told you. It was not a flag. We got a towel for A&T. Okay. We got some yellow in that uniform. Come there you on. Go. There you go. Playing first and ten. North Carolina A&T has run nine plays in the third quarter for a net minus one yard. Their first two possessions tonight offensively, they ran 19 plays, covered 85 yards, made a field goal, but since then they've gone 14 plays, 31 yards with two punts and a missed field goal. And the way that they're having to move the ball is into that, that strength of this UAB defense. And we've talked about that front seven led by Fish McWilliams up front. A&T, this is going to be something they'll have to work through really the entire season with two young quarterbacks. Downfield passing game, I have liked when they've moved the pocket for Eli Brickhandler. Get him away, roll the pocket, easy reads. They haven't done a lot of that tonight, but that has been clearly an area that they struggled in. Talking about losses from the A&T team from a year ago. Wesley Graves on the carry. Probably none more significant than Basil Tootin, who had over 1,300 yards rushing and 13 touchdowns last season. That was just on the ground. He had 17 total touchdowns. They also lost a couple of key pieces on the defensive side. Taekwon King went to East Carolina, so did Caleb Jones. Carfer Kaba transferred to North Carolina Central. Sterling Burkhalter ended up at Cincinnati, a wide receiver. So this is a young football team. In its first year in the CAA. North Carolina A&T was a member of the MEAC for 50 years. One of the founding members. Big run there by Brick Handler. He found a little opening on the outside and did not hesitate. That's one of the pieces we've seen him utilize some. He's not as good an athlete as, as K.J. White is, but still clearly an effective runner. And I like the decisiveness, right? It looks blown up in front of him. There's bodies in green jerseys all over the place. Take off and get vertical, pick up the first down. Gate of 21. This one looks like a quarterback draw. Takes it across midfield. And does it again right there. I'm not sure if that was a quarterback draw or if it was a screen that they didn't have a good look. But either way, he gets vertical on a play that looked like it might have been dead in the backfield. Picks up five yards. So after 50 years in the MEAC, mixed emotions for a lot of the fans of North Carolina A&T about a move to the Big South. Ultimately decided that the CAA was a better fit for them from a conference standpoint. And that is the new home. When we talked to head coach Vincent Brown about what a unique position it is to take over a team that they went 7-4 and four last year in the Big South. I mean, this was a good football team. We got flags coming from the back judge on both sides. Illegal substitution. Defense. More than 12 players. Correction, more than 11 players in formation the snap. Five-yard penalty. First down. But going back to head coach Vincent Brown, it's just unique that a 7-4 and four team they moved on from their former head coach. They bring in Coach Brown and his staff, and he talked about, look, that's the standard here at a and It is a winning culture, a winning history, wanting to compete at the highest level. And in this new conference, they're expecting to compete right away. Dixon and Graves both in the backfield this time. The handoff is to Graves, and he's got a hole. He's got a first down down close to the 25-yard line. Dropped it to 27. A big collision with A.J. Brown, who looks like he's shaking up from the safety spot. Look on the right side of your screen. Bam, right there. Woo, man. A.J. Brown grabbing that arm almost like what you see with a stinger. He's now off the field. 
with the medical staff. Hopefully he's okay. But Wesley Graves looks like a Mack truck coming downhill too. 5'9", 225. Rick Handler keeps it himself and he picks his way down close to the 20. A&T gets something going on this drive. Trying to cut into a 25 point deficit as we close in on the end of the third quarter. There is youth on this team, there's no doubt, but where there is some, some depth and some returning starters is on that offensive line. Two of their captains, Cesar Minaro and Lawrence Legroni, two captains up front, center and left guard, that they feel like they can lean on, and you're seeing some of that right now. That push is really coming from that left side. Charlie Dixon on the carry, and Dixon going to pick up a first down across the 15-yard line. And again, working that left side, leaning on Lawrence Legrone, Jason Ivey. So we go to the fourth quarter at Protective Stadium in Birmingham. UAB in control, but North Carolina A&T trying to cut into the deficit. A massive night tonight for UAB starting quarterback Jacob Zeno. One of the things that Trent Dilfer has emphasized is connecting with the community here in Birmingham. That means the campus community and the city beyond. His players, since staff came in nine months ago, have logged over 600 hours of community service, and he has embraced this city as well. Absolutely. He's talked about how important it is to get his kids out of the community and make sure that the fans in Birmingham know that these players appreciate them and to try and you know attract them to these games. 
North Carolina A&T with a first down. No gate on first down. And I love that Coach Dilfer was honest about, look, in this state, it's War Eagle and Roll Tide. But there is also a place for UAB. And a lot of that you see with the support in this stadium, in the new facilities. When we went and met with the staff yesterday, I remember coming here as a player back in the days where they played at Legion Field and just how different this, different this place feels and the support that Birmingham has and how they've rallied around this program. I think it's fantastic. Nicholas Dobson slow getting up, being helped off the field by the training staff for North Carolina A&T. Yeah, Birmingham is a city, and you know, a ton of credit to the leadership here, has really had a renaissance over the course of the last decade, decade and a half. This area where the stadium sits is completely developed. New hotels, restaurants, uh, recreational facilities. If you want to hit golf balls into nets along the highway, you can do that very close to, uh, to where we are. Birmingham has turned into an incredible food town. <laughs> Clearly. Shout out automatic seafood last night. Yep, no wow. doubt. And, and look, at I mean, 50 wins since return to play. What this team has accomplished in a really short period of time. Rick Handler, nothing to do, nowhere to go with it. Is that one where you want to see him throw it away? Yeah, you do, because that's an unnecessary shot there at the end. And now, unfortunately, it looks like he's slow to get up and those are the licks as a quarterback that you just don't need to take hopefully he's okay looks a little bit hobbled there on the sideline and there's that balance of trying to make a play but sometimes you got to realize there's not a play to be made and just get ready to do it again and he's he's back down in a lot of pain you hate to see that and also Tariq Stewart the Cleveland Ohio native transfer from West Virginia looking at his left leg. That's the fifth sack of the night for UAB. We'll be back after this timeout. Twenty-eight, three, fourteen, eighteen to go. A third down coming up here for North Carolina A and T. KJ White into the game. Good news is Eric uh, Eli Brickhandler appeared to be okay walking around on the sideline. Looked like White wanted to pull it there, but he wasn't able to get it away from Wesley Graves. And A and T is going to have to settle for a field goal try. Blown up from the start there with Nikia Eason. The defense bowing up. Go going back to that play with Eli Brickhandler, those absolutely are the plays as a quarterback. You will learn 
to avoid those shots. There are times where you risk your body, you try to pick up the third down or the fourth down, but second and long, if trying to extend a play, those are the shots that you just don't need to take on your body. 33-yard field goal attempt here from Owen Daffer. Splits the uprights there. Two scores in the game tonight for Daffer. All of the points coming from him for North Carolina a and It is now 28-6. to If you've ever been to Birmingham, you know that the Vulcan statue sits high above the city, kind of looks out over the entire city. Trent Dilfer, last night, right at sunset, took his team to the site of the Vulcan statue and talked to his team about the city below being what they are playing for. It kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier, about really trying to embrace Birmingham by this football team. Well, and the message that he has made very clear from the beginning is we want to have a product that the city is proud of. And that doesn't mean that it's going to be Alabama or Auburn, but that doesn't mean that it can't be really good football that the city can be proud of. And I think that's what they're building towards. And he's doing it the right way. They've obviously had to bring in a lot of new faces to get their roster up to speed, but you could tell just in the opening comments that we aired from his pregame speech on reminding his guys that they're loved and wanting them to go out and play free that's not always the message from college coaches and I think it's refreshing and for as best we can tell it looks like Trent Dilfer's doing this the right way ground up and I think Blazers fans have a lot to be excited about the Vulcan statue by the way is the largest cast iron statue in the world it is the city symbol of Birmingham reflecting on the roots in the iron and steel industry it goes out of bounds so good field position coming up uh, coming up here for UAB Kick out of bounds. Kicking team. By rule, the ball will be placed at the 35 yard line. First down. First down. 56 foot tall statue that depicts the Roman god Vulcan. You feel like you know more now than you knew just a couple I of do. minutes ago? I'm enlightened. What else you got? A Kameka dog <laughs> down there Kameka on the dogs. End. I still need to eat mine, or well, the rest of mine. Richard Cross, Taylor McHarg with you from Protective Stadium. Opening game of the year for UAB in North Carolina A&T. UAB now has Lee Beebe in the game in the backfield. An end around. That's Brandon Buckhalter, the Ole Miss transfer, with his first touch of the game. And he's dropped after a gain of eight on first down. Shoestring tackle away from this one going to the house. A little wrinkle to get on the perimeter for Brandon Buckhalter, the old Miss transfer, like you mentioned. Highly recruited out of Hartfield Academy in Jackson, Mississippi. Really worked out for him at Ole Miss and in a new home here at UAB. Solid run for a first down to move the chains. It has been nice to see from UAB how well they've spread the ball around. I mean, that's the first time tonight we've called Brandon Buckhalter's name, but really a lot of touches from all the different skill positions throughout the night. BB on that last carry. Down the field, Zeno trying to catch, and that snaps a streak of 20 consecutive completions. Just the second incompletion of the game for Jacob Zeno. I thought maybe that was a little forced, trying to fake the screen game. They've obviously thrown so many of them tonight and take the shot play over top. But David Laney, the East Carolina transfer, was in a good spot at the safety position. I think that's one where you, you work back down if you're Jacob Zeno, find your check down, or just take off and run. Follow. Lee Witherspoon now in the game. Zeno swings it to Samario Rudolph. Rudolph still on his feet, and a flag comes in. Gained enough yardage for the first down, down to the 38. I think this is going to be on Malachi Holt-Bennett, the Indiana transfer. For now, a gain of 13 and a first down. Trent Dilfer did not look pleased on the sideline. Let's see if the penalty goes against UAB. He's barking at the officials like you know, he doesn't think Holt Bennett did anything wrong here. We'll see what the call is. 
There is no foul to play for an illegal blindside block. First down. So they were looking at an illegal blindside block. Get another look at it at the bottom of the screen here. I see why the flag was called, but that's not the intent, right? He's got face across. That's not the, the striking blow that the illegal blindside block is, right? That's the one that you're, you're peeling back. You're going full speed back into somebody. It's that kill shot that they're trying to get out of the game. I, I did not think that that was that call. A good job by this official's crew picking up that flag. So a fresh set of downs for UAB. During the review, there's a little back and forth between the two teams. Quick pass, complete. And down to the 35-yard line. That's Lee BB on the reception. BB, a redshirt freshman from Montgomery. Played in one game a year ago. Now Witherspoon back in at running back. Zeno dumps it off, completes it to BB once again. Kind of a safety valve. And that should be enough for the first down. And now almost after almost every play, get a little bit of pushing and shoving. Those big linemen that have been leaning on each other for the better part of three hours. Now Janoris Robertson shaking up here. It has gotten a little chippy. And I like the attitude here from A&T. Look, there's only two seniors on the entire two deep for this A&T defense. A lot of youth guys that are in, really in their first spot playing college football. Attitude has, has been there for A&T. Just got to clean up execution. Nineteen eighty-eight, Washington over Denver in Super Bowl twenty-two, led by the great Doug Williams. Went on to become a head coach at Grambling, and now Trent Dilfer won Super Bowl thirty-five. The quarterback of the Baltimore Ravens over the Giants back in two thousand one. These are the only two Super Bowl winning quarterbacks that have gone on to be head coaches in college football. Is that, is that surprising at all to you? I don't think so. I think not every player would become a great coach. Michael Jordan's been very open about that as the greatest basketball player of all time. Lee Witherspoon. I, I think there's something different about players that become great coaches, and I think a lot of times you see that that drive, especially from small school guys, or guys that maybe felt overlooked or they had a chip on their shoulder and then they just enjoy the grind as a coach. 
if you became a Super Bowl winning quarterback, you've accomplished a lot. You probably, especially in this day and age, you've got plenty of money in the bank. Do you need to grind in the way that college football coaches do? But you hit the nail on the head earlier when we talked to Trent yesterday about how he just felt I wasn't fulfilled sitting at home playing 200 rounds of golf a year. That just wasn't for him. And he had that itch to get back and do it in a meaningful way. Nearly a big time interception. Janaz Sumter couldn't hang on, jumped the route. Maybe the first poor decision that we've seen tonight from Jacob Zeno. He had the one throw in the first half that, that could have been intercepted, and this one should have been and should be points for A&T going the other direction. Third and eight here for UAB. Zeno with plenty of time across the middle of the field, complete for a first down. Fred Ferrier, the second, makes the catch. This is really good by Ferrier, settling down in zone coverage. Wasn't open initially. Take a look on the right side of your screen. Throttles this down, boom, right there, and a good job on time by Jacob Zeno. Right side, diving toward the end zone, a touchdown for Samario Rudolph. 16 yards to the house. Everybody's getting a turn tonight for this Blazers offense. Samario Rudolph getting his name in the mix. Makes one miss at about the five-yard line. Extends that ball out for the score. Another jet sweep. It's been a staple of this UAB offense tonight. We've seen it run with Jermaine Brown Jr. Look at that effort to get this ball extended out for the touchdown. You're going to check that knee. I think that's what they're taking a look at right now. As a former quarterback, do you love do you love getting credit for a touchdown pass on that play? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> the ruling on the field of touchdown has been reviewed. The replay has determined that the runner's knee was down inside the one-yard line. Oh. They got the call right. It, they did. The knee is down. Unfortunately for Samario Rudolph, this, this is coming back. It'll be at March at the half-yard line. To answer your question, yes. And we did not have that in our offense. We ran the traditional jet sweep. All of that turned into rush yardage. We played Case Keenum in Houston, and he would throw for 700 yards every game, and it felt like 200 of them were from the pop pass. I was like, can we, can we implement that for me, please? But we did not. We have to hand it off. Can I not just toss it into the air as he it. comes through? And... Also, more importantly, if it gets blown up, it's just an incomplete pass. So the ball is placed inside the one-yard line. He went down at about the two, but the ball was extended out across. Jacob Zito has no idea that they got to go back out and run another play. He was helmet off, bench area. He's getting a play call. The majority of the plays, we assume, tonight have been called by Alex Morton, the offensive coordinator, who is doing that for the first time. He's gone from an analyst role at Alabama, has never been a position coach, and has taken on the role of offensive coordinator. Trent Dilfer said, I, I don't want to call plays, but I probably will some. He talked about it being a collaborative effort, and he also made the statement, he said, if I'm going to hire an offensive coordinator, I want to hire somebody that I think is better calling plays than me. Which is a pretty big compliment to a guy who has never called plays well, has before. Not done it before, that's right. But I think Alex Mortensen is not your traditional assistant that he was you know, at Alabama in title alone. Ooh, this play blown up and driven back. See where they spot it. Spotted at the eight-yard line. Henry Daniel blows this play up. It's a guy that Josh Seidenberg, defensive coordinator, says, look, he just plays his tail off. Shows up every day, ton of effort, and they turn him loose. Seeing that pop pass, we just talked about it a second ago. All night, that's really been blocked up pretty well. But back-to-back -back plays, not a lot of push up front for UAB and go from the half-yard line back to a third and goal from the eight. That was a loss of seven. UAB thought they had a touchdown. Had the ball inside the one-yard line, but two in a row that have gone backwards. Zeno dumps it off, and it's incomplete. Or, excuse me, it's complete to Witherspoon. And his feet go out from under him, though. 
this will be a drive you can bet that Trent Dilfer and Alex Mortensen will point back to and, and use this as a coaching point. There hasn't been a lot tonight that the UAB offense really hasn't been efficient and, and clean. This was not. That drive there, that's disappointing if you're a Blazers fan. You want to have that maturity at the half-yard line. Get a hat on a hat, push forward, lean on your offensive line and get a score. Instead, you go backwards 10 yards. But you remember earlier in the game, in a short-yarded situation, they got under center with quarterback sneak, and the offensive line just fired off. It certainly did not go that way. 27-yard field goal try is on the way. It is no good. So a big-time missed opportunity there for UAB. Blazers, though, still in front. 7.50 to play. It's 28 to 6. Preseason poll for the American Conference. Tulane picked to win the league. Of course, they had the great Cotton Bowl win over Southern Cal a season ago. UTSA with nine first place votes, three for SMU. This UAB team got one first place vote, but they are picked eighth in the league. Thoughts? I would have SMU circled as well out of that top cluster. Wesley Graves on the first down carry. Another physical run from Wesley Graves. I would have SMU circled. You and I, we had Preston Stone last year against Tulsa, and, and he looked solid. I think that may be an upgrade for them at quarterback. Another team in that middle of the pack that I would look for to get to the postseason this year is a surprise team, the Temple Owls. I think that's going to be an improved team under Stan Drayton. Shot down the field, and it's incomplete. It intended for Tamon Cook. It's good to see Eli Brickhandler back out there. That shot he took on the sideline, thought maybe we wouldn't get a chance to see him back in this game, but glad he could rally. Get another look at this, just taking a deep shot. Really pretty good defending on the back end. Corner's in a good spot, Ike Roll. You get another third and short here for the Aggies. Need to go across the 30-yard line. 
McCandler on the handoff and the extra effort, Wesley Graves. Strong downhill runner. They describe him as the bell cow in the backfield. And a and is still running tough, whether it's the running back spot, whether it's Brick Handler fighting to try and, we talked about a minute ago, extending plays even when we say you know, maybe he shouldn't have, but you can appreciate as a fan of the Aggies, there, there's no quit in this team. Clearly put, putting forth effort late in the fourth quarter. Inside seven minutes to play. Charlie Dixon, not much room there. Tackle that time for Jackson Bratton. Jackson Bratton with another tackle. And we talked with Trent Dilfer about Jackson Bratton. We talked with new defensive coordinator Sione Defoe about him as well. And it was Defoe who really said, you know, this is this is his time. He has, he's played the game. He's been around it for a while. Transfer from Alabama. He's a fourth-year college football player. Tonight, a career-high 10 tackles for Jackson Bratton. Rick Handler, again, choosing not to throw it away, and he takes a shot instead by Jackson Bratton once again. And that's another example for this defensive unit. There's youth here, clearly, but a lot of these guys, are, they've been in college for three or four years. Jackson Bratton's a good example of that, as you see closing speed from him coming right at Eli Brickhandler. These are the guys that this defensive unit, they're expecting to, to grow up and do it quickly because they're not freshmen. They're not redshirt freshmen or sophomores in a lot of cases. They've been in college for a long time. They should be able to pick up the system quickly, and that's Jackson Bratton's a great example of that and how he's performed tonight. Lawrence Legrone, the injured player for North Carolina A&T. Legrone, one of the team captains, fifth-year senior from Douglasville, Georgia. 28-6, UAB in front with five and a half to play.
Road helped off the field. Able to walk off on his own power. Third down and 11. The Aggies of North Carolina A&T. Screen pass. And it's going to be a couple of yards short of the first down. Benji Christian on the reception. A rivalry game coming up for A&T next week in their season home opener when they host North Carolina Central. A&T going to punt it away. Caleb Brickhouse, the punter for the Aggies. Iverson strap hooks. Back to return it for UAB. Let this one hit. Takes a big Aggie roll down inside the 10, inside the 5. Uh, Caleb Brickhouse had the one punt that he shanked. His first of the season. It went 20 yards. This one goes 61 yards, and it's down at the 1. He also has a 50-yard punt tonight. How about some of the guys to watch this year in the American Conference? Frank Harris, over 4,000 yards through the air last year. We've talked a lot tonight about Jermaine Brown. Michael Pratt, one of the best quarterbacks in the country, returning after a 3,000-yard passing season a year ago. That's yeah, huge for Tulane to get Michael Pratt back. I don't think it was any secret that there were a lot of schools around the country that would have taken him in the portal, and he decided to come back. That's a guy that you'll see get drafted next year, one of the more talented quarterbacks in all of the country at any level, uh, and really a huge deal for Coach Fritz and that staff to get Pratt back for it this last season. Jacob Zeno has gone the distance at quarterback tonight. Or UAB stands in, dumps it across the middle, a little breathing room after that first down completion. Malachi Holt Bennett on the catch there for UAB. Not an easy schedule early for Tulane either. They open with South Alabama. And K. Wallach's done a really good job with that program. In week two, they host Ole Miss at Yulman Stadium. That likely will be a top 25 matchup between those two teams. And then in week three, they've got to go to Hattiesburg and take on a Southern Miss team that beat them in New Orleans last year. That's right, and that was the, the one blemish really early in the season. Yeah. I thought when you look back at the end of the year, man, what the heck happened against Southern Miss? But I, I totally agree, that first three-week stretch of the non-conference schedule, it will test Tulane and some of the depth issues that they have in spots that they lost guys to the NFL. Run out across the 10-yard line. That's going to be really close to a first down. It is going to be a first down. Lee BB Jr. Has to carry it again straight ahead. He's going to pick up, what, about nine yards there? Some of what we're going to be watching for in the American, that Tulane Memphis game on October 13th. How about when this UAB team heads to San Antonio? They actually gave him a 10-yard game there. North Texas SMU, little Dallas Metro area rivalry game. Friday night action there. How about that final Saturday of the regular season when UTSA and Tulane hooked up? You mentioned Jeff Trailer earlier, the job that he has done with that Roadrunners team. That's another program for fans that maybe you're not as familiar with UTSA and what they've accomplished. They have only been playing football for a little over a decade. And that was another team that when they joined Conference USA as a player, we went to the Dome and to see the Alamo Dome, to see what they have become in, in such a short period of time and what Jeff Trailer has built. I think it's one of the more impressive coaching jobs in, in all of college football. Pass complete. That's Fred Ferrier with another catch, his third of the game. And for as impressive and as important as it was for Michael Pratt to come back into lane. Getting Frank Harris back for UTSA was critical, and I think that's why you see them getting top 25 votes. They're not there right now. They've got a couple tests early. They go to Houston. They're road favorites right now, and then they get a chance to go to Tennessee. If they're really as good as some people think they are, and I'm one of them, 
I'm not saying they're going to go in and get a win in Knoxville, but I think they can compete with that Tennessee team. That's week four, September 23rd. It's a game that was scheduled by the previous administration at Tennessee. My guess is if Danny White was scheduling games, he probably wouldn't schedule UTSA probably right not. now. Dallas Payne juggled that one but was able to hang on to it for the first down. Clock running. Inside two minutes, closing in on a minute and a half. 13 yards on the carry. This is exactly how UAB wanted this drive to go. Just chew up clock, pick up first downs. Trent Dilfer on his way to a career opening win as a college football coach. Did a lot of winning at Lipscomb Academy the last couple of years, 26 and one in his last two seasons with two Tennessee State Championships and arguably one of the most talented high school football teams in the history of high school football in Tennessee. Well, and you said it best on when he got there and turned on the tape of what he was inheriting and, and literally cried. And it, it was not happy tears. It was, man, we've got a long way to go. I think it's clear tonight. Look, there's, there's a big difference in Lipscomb Academy and UAB, but this program is in a good spot. And I think there's some building blocks here that they'll be able to work with. Uh, I really was impressed tonight with Jacob Zeno. They'll be tested early as well. I think, you know, even at, on, the, on the road at Georgia Southern, ULL, that's a good, traditionally a good Sun Belt team. And then obviously at Georgia, at Tulane, that's a tough back-to-back -to -back stretch as the, the calendar turns to October. Less than a minute to play. Zeno, wide open, middle of the field, down to the five-yard line. Fred Ferrier with the catch. Jacob Zeno, 28 yards on the pass. He may not get to 300 yards tonight, but it has been a good night throwing the football. 287 yards passing tonight for Jacob Zeno. He dumps this one off, and he's got another touchdown pass. Iverson strap hooks, diving for the pylon. And UAB adds a touchdown late with less than 30 seconds to play. Now, part of me thinks that was Trent Dilfer and Alex Mortensen wanting to make up for that drive where they had it at the half-yard line and didn't punch it in. Uh, good for UAB to cap this off. Jacob Zeno again. Good play action. A significant play to some. Indeed. Extra point is good. It is now 35 to 6. That's a 29 point lead for UAB. So the Blazers get it done on opening night. And what a night for Jacob Zeno. 291 yards. Three touchdowns through the air, 38 of 41. And he is our player of the game. Our player of the game brought to you by Geico, proud partner of the American. And what other choice could there be tonight? Well, he was so efficient all game, 38 of 41, 291 and three touchdowns. Really just a couple blemishes in there, a couple errant throws. Outside of that, this really was sound decision making, getting the ball out of his hands quick. Obviously has a, a good understanding of what they're trying to accomplish here in this Alex Mortensen-led offense and just was really impressed by Jacob Zeno all night. You can see also why he was voted a captain as a first-time starter here for the Blazers. So Zeno, our Geico player of the game. Geico, proud partner of the American. Off taken at the five. Amon Cook. Well, he's got some room on the outside. Spun around and dropped as he goes across the 35-yard line. A little extra pushing and shoving. I suppose it's possible that North Carolina A&T took a little exception to that last touchdown. I think that's certainly possible.
good job by the officials to get that broken up quickly. And 17 seconds left on the clock. Dylan Hopkins is the last UAB quarterback to throw for three touchdowns in a game. Did that against BYU in 2021. Jermaine Brown, not nearly as much action in the second half, certainly not in the fourth quarter. He had 10 touches in the ball game. 80 yards, a couple of touchdowns, both of those on the ground. Hand off straight ahead. And that should do it on this opening Thursday night in Birmingham as Wesley Graves gets the last carry of the game for North Carolina A&T. 35-6 the final. The UAB Blazers win in Trent Dilfer's debut as a head coach. And UAB will now get ready for Georgia Southern. They go to Statesboro next weekend as they try to keep it rolling. Really good start for this UAB football team, and especially for Jacob Zena. That was, it's exactly, especially on the offensive side early, exactly what I think this team needed. And we talked about there will be challenges that come. Obviously, there's, there's a couple stretches where this schedule gets difficult. But for Trent Dilfer's opening night, it's a new staff, 51 new players on this team like we talked about. Good opening night, good first step, and, and good to get a win under their belt. We're going to get a chance to visit with Trent Dilfer here in just a moment as his team gets a win to start the season. And Edward Lynn.